I am William and I'll be trying to I'll be showing you you guys if and we'll be finding out if the death theme matrix is uh time dependent or not. So to get some out of the way, uh we don't see row right now, but that is what our death theme matrix is, which is our wave function and our wave function uh the complex con the conjugate of it. And these uh Brackets right here, we have our bra and our ket. Um, the ket value is going to be our, um, like our column vector here, while, the, while we'll have like a row as our bra. And then uh, A is just part of our operation of an ABCD square matrix. So when see if this is time dependent, we'll take the derivative with respect to time and see if it equals zero. So just deriving it, uh, we have to make sure that we apply product rule. And then when doing that, we can see that the middle term is killed the time derivative of A. So A dot be killed because um, it's just the time derivative of an operator. So and the operator is dependent on time, obviously. And then once applying our derivatives, our H is our Hamiltonian, just from taking the derivative. And then we can, we end up that doing the I over H bar, uh, the conjugate times uh, H minus A uh, minus A H times then our wave function again which um, can be then, but one way that you'll commonly see it is this notation on the bottom, but these last two parts are the same thing. From here, from this first part of what I'm going to be presenting about is that these two matrices, um, they, matrices are not communicative, but there are a select few that are, especially if one of them were to be the identity matrix. And then there's some other two examples where two matrices are communicated. And so this, since it's not always equal to zero, this means that it is or can be time dependent. And then connecting this to the quantum Louisville uh, theorem, our density of uh, time we pretty much get this exact same thing again, but it looks slightly different. And you'll commonly see it as uh, our bottom part, you'll com commonly see it as uh, one over i h bar, which all they did was multiply the top and bottom by i. And then just trying to find some connections between these between different things, we're able to see that um, what we originally started off to is actually the trace. I don't have the trace part written out, but the trace of our A matrix type dense with their density. And then um, the trace, if you don't know, it's just taking the sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix. So if you have a square matrix of like two, four, Five six. You just take the two and the six, uh, two and the six uh, together, and that's what I have. Okay, please join me. Thank you, Julia. So, any questions uh, from online or from uh, from the audience? So, I guess just a text up. So you talked about the type checking if the operators are time dependent. Does that lead it to? I'm assuming that those are the same tools you you use to see if the density matrix is time dependent. Yeah, if it, the operators, if you took the derivative and see if it was zero, if it's uh, zero, that means it's uh, not dependent on time. So the density matrix is operator, or I guess matrix. The or the A matrix is the operator. The density matrix 
the actual density matrix is uh, this next to the row. So density can be considered as a parameter. And then if you follow this phase uh, of the push motion. So there is something in the chat that would be correct to say that the change in time expectation value of an operator is determined by the communication of the operator and with the data operator. Just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was said okay, that a question from all the so it's safe to say that Louisville equation is a way of representing the density matrix. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of just saying the same thing, but I just wanted to make a true, just kind of put it in your face that that connection is there. Any other questions? Um, uh, can you go back can you go to your last slide? Second last yeah, this one. So um, I don't know how to formulate it as a, as a question. I just wanted to bring in uh, the information. The scenic all the point of theory and theory at all is to serve to experiment to predict outcome of uh, uh, measurement. And this bracket, this operator inside, is the practical way to compute an observer. But there is an alternative way. There, one can get an expectation measure for the value of an observable either from a function or from density metrics. And it is the reason why later on we, uh, well, it's not only the reason, but it is a condition that allows us to jump from wave function to the instrument. Yeah. I don't know how to formulate the question, but if anyone disagrees, please raise hand. Okay, more questions to you. That y stash c dot r plus. Mm -hmm. Y stash c times x star v or y stash c plus oh, x star v. That's just a Say that as part of the conjugate uh, wave function. Yeah, but it should be plus yeah. and middle. It's not a multiply. No, it's not a multiply symbol. Get yeah, it. Why, in your bra, why do you have the star written there? To show that it's. Uh, Conjugate. It's already conjugate. It's already a conjugate without that. Well, it's just showing that to represent that it is. We don't need to. Yeah, in, in a standard notation, uh, one will need uh, the star in the right can. Uh, that's correct. Thank you, David. So, more questions one, more questions two, more questions three. Let's thank uh, you once again.